Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Sanket Pisak and I am a gyne consultant gynecological endoscopic surgeon practicing in Mumbai. Today we are going to be discussing a very common pathology which is endometrial polyp. So let's start off with the basics and what exactly is a polyp. Uh, we all know that the uterus has an inner lining which is called as the endometrial cavity. We've discussed this amply before in our videos and this endometrial lining usually grows during the month and at the end of the month when there is menstrual bleeding this endometrial lining sheds itself off and then again grows in the next month and so on and this process continues. In case of a polyp there is usually some sort of hormone excess. This hormone is usually the hormone estrogen which is naturally secreted in the female body until the time that the woman has menopause which is at about 55 years of age. This uh, hormone estrogen sometimes causes a localized increase in the growth of endometrium more than what it should be as compared to the surrounding endometrium. Of course, every time it may not be a hormone excess. Sometimes it may even be the sign of an early cancer because of which there is localized overgrowth without the control of the body hormone estrogen. Regardless of what the cause is, there is a localized overgrowth of endometrial tissue at one place and because of this the patient has certain specific symptoms. Most of the time the commonest symptoms is irregular or heavy menstrual bleeding. This heavy menstrual bleeding could last for more than five to six days, may result in clots being passed during the periods and the irregular bleeding is something which is also very common which may lead to intermenstrual bleeding that means you may have certain amount of spotting or small amounts of bleeding away from the date of the expected menses, which can be a little inconvenient, particularly when you're traveling or when you're not expecting. Rarely endometrial polyps ever cause pain to the patient. Uh, how do you find this out and what is the other possibility that it could be unless if it is not a polyp? Generally, patients who have a little bit of endometrial overgrowth because of hormone excess, what we call as thick endometrial, may also be mistaken for a polyp. So if you have a sonography report that says thick endometrial, remember that it could be thick endometrium, but it could also be an endometrial polyp, and this requires further evaluation. What is to be done in case of an endometrial polyp? Well, an endometrial polyp is something that usually does not go away with medicines alone. Unless the polyp is less than a centimeter in size. So polyps that are less than one centimeter in size have a 20 to 25 percent chance of regression by medicines alone. That means that a polyp which is less than one centimeter in size, 75 percent of the times will not go away on its own. For a polyp that is more than one centimeter in size, you can almost always consider that it is not going to go away by hormone treatment or by expected management. That means waiting for it to go away without doing anything at all. Hence, the surgery that is required is actually hysteroscopic polypectomy. And this surgery means that a camera and a micro scissor is actually inserted into the uterine cavity and under vision, the polyp is cut out, removed, and then sent for a biopsy testing. This is a daycare procedure. It does not require any overnight admission, and there are no cuts on the abdomen. Hence, recovery is very fast. I'm going to put a link of another video of hysteroscopic polypectomy in the description box below, so you can check that out as well. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Also, if you like the video, please click on the icon above to subscribe to our channel and to keep receiving more updates. Thank you.